In this video, I'll be explaining to you the difference between a REST API and WebSockets. This is going to be a concept overview video. I'm not going to go into any low-level details of either option, but instead I'm going to give you a high-level summary of both of these two ideas. So let's just jump right into it. And the way I want to do this is describe to you the difference between these two things by using an example. And more specifically, we're going to be using a real-time chatting application as a toy example for this demonstration. So let's assume that we have two users. We have John and Mary, and they both want to communicate with one another. So both of them have instances of their chatting application. The top instance is from John's perspective, and the bottom instance is from Mary's perspective. And typically in these types of application architectures, you usually have a server that's going to orchestrate and facilitate the communication between both parties. And then you'll also have a database on the server side that's going to be storing things like event logs and other content related to conversations. So let's say both users have loaded up this application and John decides to send a message to Mary and he says to her, hey, Mary. So in a typical REST based model, how this would usually work is that John's chat room application would send a post request to a message API. And this API would contain information such as the room in question, which is room 101. It would contain the user ID, which is John, and it would contain the message payload, which in this case is Hey Mary. So the server would proceed to store that content into its database so that it could retrieve it later. But the question becomes, how does Mary's application get notified that a chat message was sent by John? There's no connection that's been established yet. So there's really no line of communication from Mary to speak to the backend server. Now, a primitive way to solve this problem is by using something called short polling. And short polling is the idea that when Mary's application or even John's application initially loads up, It'll make an initial request to the backend server asking for new messages. So it'll send a get request to the message API asking for any new messages for room 101. And it'll proceed to set a timer that'll say every X number of seconds, X can be one second, five seconds, 10 seconds, even 30 seconds, proceed to make this call again. And it'll do this over and over and over again. So if we run through this example of what we just spoke about here, in this case, when John sent his message, it would go to the server, be stored in the database, and then Mary's application would proceed to call the get API from the message endpoint to receive the updated set of messages that are in the database and finally present that information onto her chatting application. So if you think about it, this is not a good approach. And it turns out that this is kind of an outdated approach, but people do use this just because of its ease of use and its reliability. It's not efficient from the server and database perspective or even from the client perspective. Because if you think about it, this communication that's happening between the client and the server here, there's latency delay in between every call. So for example, if you set your interval to be calling every five seconds, that means there's a maximum five second delay in between the time where John sends his message and when the interval fires and a new API call is made to retrieve that message from the database and show it on Mary's application. Now, of course, you can lower this interval to something like one second or so, but then that's going to cause stress on your server and database. Remember, these are REST or HTTP API calls. So every time a request is made, it's going to hit your server. Your server is going to query a database and respond with the new messages. And of course, that's got to be returned all the way back to the caller. So as your user base grows, this can quickly become out of control. If you have too many users that are calling regularly with this short polling interval, then it can quickly start to impact the stability of your server and your database. So there's multiple points of failure here in which your application can suffer from. Now there is a slight improvement on this model and it's called long polling. Instead of Mary's application calling repeatedly on a consistent timer every X seconds, the initial call will still be made, but the server will hold on to the request and it won't respond right away. It'll delay responding and internally, it'll check against the database for when new messages are received. And if and when a new message is received from the server perspective, it'll finally respond back to Mary's application and display that information on their application. Subsequently, Mary's application will make another call and it'll continuously repeat this process with that request staying open until the server gets new content. This is slightly better than short polling, but a little bit more difficult to implement. And it does require some work on the back end to facilitate this. So REST or HTTP APIs follow what's called the request response model. That means the client, which is John or Mary's application in this case, needs to make a request to the server to ask for information. 
The server can delay its response or it can respond right away. It doesn't matter. However, in this model, the server cannot be the one that initiates that conversation. So it cannot push messages into the client or broadcast them out to the client. And that's where WebSockets comes in. So let's proceed to talking about WebSockets using this exact same example and describing the difference between the two scenarios. So again, we have John and Mary, both of them have their versions of the application. We still have a server and a database on the back end. Now with WebSockets, on application load, both applications, both John's and Mary's, will establish a connection to the server. And this connection is basically saying to the server that, hello, I am connected and I am ready to receive messages if anything changes on either side of this equation. So the server now knows that both John and Mary are present and that it is able to communicate with both of them. So if we run through this exact same scenario and John sends a message that says, hey, Mary, we're still going to have a message that gets sent to the back end with all the data that's necessary. However, instead of Mary's application having to do anything odd, like doing repeated calls or doing long or short polling, the server is now going to be capable of broadcasting a message out to the caller. Now, after that message is received on Mary's end, of course, it'll be shown in the UI. But if other messages were to occur, either from Mary or from John, this exact same pattern would occur. The server now has knowledge who is actually connected to this application and can both receive and push messages into both clients. Now, this is the main idea with WebSockets. Instead of it being request response, it's what's called a full duplex or bi-directional communication. In this model, the client can initiate actions that send content to the server, and the server can initiate actions to send content back to the user. This is the key difference between these two things. Now, in terms of choosing one or the other, HTTP or REST is typically a lot easier to set up, and there's a ton of documentation over how to do this, a lot of tools that exist out there that help you really get started quickly. WebSockets are now supported on all major browsers, so it's quickly getting very, very popular in the community. However, there is some extra effort and some different scaling concerns that you may need to think about when you're using WebSockets. So I hope this video was useful in clearing up the difference between these two ideas. Thanks so much for watching.